G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. It seems that the more things change, the more things stay the same. And one thing that has stayed the same over this patch is the dominance of the F-14A. This is perhaps still the king of War Thunder, still the best plane in the game, and of course, still the number one plane in this tier. The F-14 combines that beautiful IR missile performance avionics, semi-active radar homing, and of course, active radar homing missiles with a beautiful platform that is just extremely capable. Now, you might just see me tooting the horn of the F-14 and going, well, you know, the MiG-29 is a lot faster, the F-16 has greater turning, but I think being the jack of all trades and the ace of none doesn't really make a difference. It Just being that, uh, that, being that flexible, having the ability to do multiple things but most importantly, having the greatest standoff range is the best thing about top tier, or at least the best thing that you can do in top tier. The F-14 has AIM-7s. It's got a very powerful radar. And of course, having both of those gives it a distinct advantage with being able to dictate the way the battle flows. And this is why the F-14 was such a powerful plane last patch. And uh, honestly, the F-14 has remained so for a very, very long time. And I think that is all down to two major things. The first is the AIM-54s. The AIM-54s have a really, really long range. The track while scan is able to really just lay the hurt on your opponents by giving you very easy targets to switch to. The active radar homing missiles are very easy to use. You just fire and forget. And of course, they have such a long range that you can intercept opponents before they even reach supersonic speeds in some cases. The other really, really important thing here is the thing that makes it all happen, and that is the radar. The radar, I believe, is the strongest in the game. It seems to be the one that is able to hold the most locks, uh, defeat notching the most, and just overall be an absolute powerhouse. This particular radar just seems to be able to do everything, and that is what makes this plane so goddamn strong. We have a 13 kilometer range here, the enemy is clearly traveling from, from our left to the right, and it's holding. It's holding very, very well. And this is kind of a common theme for the F-14. You just seem to be able to hold locks. And of course, with those highly, highly sort of potent AIM-7Fs, you have a very, very long range. These things burn for 40 kilometers of flight time, and there is no stopping them. This MiG-23 barely stands a chance. The MiG-27 next to him is easily as well, barely going to stand a chance. Three kilometer range, AIM-9H, sends it away, and of course, there is nothing the MiG-27 is able to do because he does not have a brain. He could have probably flared it. Yes, that's true, but honestly, this is a very, very common theme. You might be comparing this plane to the F-4 EJ Kai. And honestly, the EJ Kai is a good plane, but nothing quite stands up to the performance, particularly the flight performance of the F-14. It does trade the AIM-9L for the AIM-9H and a little bit more flight performance, but that performance is totally worth it. It is just so much stronger, so much more powerful, because it is able to put itself in areas where the F-4 EJ Kai could only dream of. This J7D is really just not going to stand a chance, and honestly, you wouldn't have been able to do that against an EJ Kai. The MiG-29 here is looking super juicy, not paying attention, going to pay a repair cost. The other MiG-29 is doing the same thing, except he is paying attention, and he does flare. So I uh, sort of, I let him escape. Let's just say I let him escape. But we're firing missiles everywhere. There are plenty of targets here, and of course, in this case, we have so many targets in the area that this plane is just sort of able to deal with them. The MiG-23 here looks cute and very, very, uh, very destroyable, uh, very repair costable, uh, but we're going to leave him alone, and that is definitely not going to bite me in the ass because we're going to go here for kill number seven with our last missile. It's coming in really nice and hot, and of course it gets a kill, giving us kill number seven. Another beautiful seven kill match to round out the day. Moving very, very straightly on, we are in a down tier here. We've got a Harrier, we've got an F4E, it, it's, a, it's an 11.3 plane, the F14, and I genuinely don't think it belongs there. It is a, it's a 12.0 plane by any stretch of the imagination. This is very easily the best plane in the game because of just so many abilities that this plane has, 
And of course, it's just able to do at least one thing better than every single plane in the match, uh, particularly with that radar. And the radar means everything at this tier. If you don't have a radar, you're pretty much screwed, which is why the tornado is not seen in these battles. You pretty much just can do everything. And that's what I like about the F-14. I am very, very scared of the F-14D and its uh, possibility or its, its potential to come to the game because if it does and there is no proper counterplay, it is going to absolutely wreak havoc. It'll probably have better missiles, it'll probably have better performance, it'll probably be lighter, and of course, it will absolutely ruin everything. This uh, particular J7D is going to find out the hard way of the power of the F-14 Tomcat. Uh, he has gone vertical at the last second, um, and unfortunately for me, he does manage to get away. He's flown close enough to the ground to avoid the missile, uh, and it looks like this F-14 is instead going to be the next victim. He's going in, I uh, believe, for the F-4E, and of course the best way to avoid an AIM-7 is to not be the one that it's fired at, and to fire at the guy who's firing uh, the AIM-7 instead. That's that's kind of the only way that you counterplay these, and I will bring that up in a video. Um, you'll see in the, in the coming days, but essentially the AIM-7 is the dominant missile at top tier, and it is by a fairly long shot. So having the dominant missile on the dominant radar, on the dominant airframe, uh, with the second from dominant air-to-air -air missile, so IR, sorry, air-to-air -air missile, uh, combine that with the capability of carrying the only active radar homing missile, and you have the perfect platform for uh, the Apex Predators update. This is by a very, very long shot, the single best plane in the game. And uh, honestly, I find that kind of unfair. I would like to see more than one nation have a very, very good plane. I think back to when the F4E, the MiG-21 SMT, the MiG-21 MF, the Mirage 3C were all top tier. Uh, flares were not really a thing. Um, act radar missiles were not really a thing. But of course, you were able to sort of have some counterplay. And there is unfortunately no counterplay against the uh, AIM-7, and particularly on the F-14. There is very little notching to be done. And of course, the performance of the F-14 means that you can get away with a lot very, very easily. So yeah, it, it does make me a little bit sad, but of course, we're just here to enjoy the carnage. So this F-14 here is going to find out the hard way what it's like to not pay attention. And instead, he is going to pay a repair cost. This F-16 is in the same boat uh, and will be flying an absolute boat at that speed. So, um, of course, the F-16 is compressing pretty damn hard and I don't think he even has flares. Or is he traveling so slow? It doesn't really matter because he's dead now. And that's the match. A very, very straightforward and simple end to this whole carnage. It's a really, really easy and simple plane to fly. And honestly, I fly this plane to relax. I'm not even kidding. It's so brain dead. You just chill and relax and fly around, fire AIM-7s, fire AIM-9Hs, and enjoy your day. This final match here is another example of just how powerful this plane is. We're going to go again around the sides of the map. I don't like to YOLO in because I find that I'll have enemies on both sides and that the enemies will be, uh, you know, firing lots of missiles at me. So I don't want to be the one to sort of YOLO in and die, but I'm going to sort of skirt around on the outsides, pick off the ones on the outside, and then sort of make my way back in. This also gives me an opportunity to turn around or turn away from the uh, AIM-54 Phoenix spam, which is inevitable if you are fighting on mixed battles, uh, which is going to be very, very common at this tier. Now, we have a J-8B in the middle who is clearly not following the advice that I'm giving you guys, and he will eventually suffer the hard way, particularly with a team full of F-14s. And this F-14 down below me is firing a missile. I probably could have gone for him, but I've decided that the Mirage is a bigger target because the Mirage has a weapon that is actually genuinely scary, and that is the Magic 2. Magic 2 is very, very strong because it is somewhat flare resistant and pulls a lot harder than I can. So I'm just going to go for the Mirage. It is a Mirage 2000, and the Mirage is probably, like I said in my uh, Mirage 2000 video, the only thing that can stand up to the F-14 bullies. Uh, everything else is pretty much eaten for breakfast by this particular plane. Now, this F-16 is going to find out the hard way, unless he's able to notch, but it looks like I'm just able to keep the lock. And in any other situation, I probably would have lost that, that lock. Um, any F-16 or 
maybe the MiG-29 or the MLD or any other plane, I probably would have lost that radar lock. But no, the F-14 is an absolute chad and manages to hold just about every other radar lock that you can think of. The only time you will ever lose a radar lock is if they're traveling pretty slow and are notching you. So within about four kilometers, but even then it's kind of sketch. And by the time you uh, get into a case like that, half the time you are going to be well and truly away from your opponent anyway. Uh, and the, the missile is just gonna sort of head towards you. So you, you don't have much time to react. Now, speaking of reaction time, we are in the battle of the F-14s. I've managed to pop my wings out. I've got an MLD who is not looking very healthy, so he's no longer a threat. And the F-14 here has overshot me. He's fired one flare, which is really going to do something. As you can see, it's just it's just completely negated my missile. Um, if it was an R-60, it would have just gone for the uh, gone for the flare, and then it would have been like, you know, shiny flare cool and uh, that would have been the end of it but no the aim9h is far superior to the r60m and has absolutely negated the flare like it's nothing so our next customer here is the f16 looking pretty juicy in a dogfight with the f14 very distracted and potentially not going to flare and dodge that and that is kill number six i've got mm, what 16 kills in the last 10 minutes of gameplay and this took me an afternoon this was not particularly hard and of course i did play some other matches over the over the day and it just wasn't that hard to gain fo gather footage for this video i feel like this was easy mode and i really feel like this was unfair but ladies and gentlemen unfair is also the end of the video so i greatly appreciate you guys sort of stopping by watching to the end and sort of keeping the channel going i greatly appreciate the support thank you so much for watching take care and i'll catch you next time